back. We're back. This is Renovate and Build with Jim and Sandra, powered by Fair Trade Works. Good morning. You're listening to Renovate and Build on Sea Isle 650. Jim and I are here every Saturday morning uh, from 9 until 10 talking everything construction. Jim, I saw you during the break opening some listener questions over there. Anything you'd like to share? Yeah, certainly. First, I'm just very happy that we actually have some listener <laughs> questions. Somebody is actually <laughs> listening, so that's number one. And uh, But no, we, we again, on a serious note, we're, we're construction is a hot topic we all have home, so we're, we're very happy that people are interested in construction, learning more. And people are starting to understand that now there is a trusted source in town, and that's Fair Trade Work. So we're really enjoying interacting with all our new listeners, clients, and uh, yeah, anybody that wants to ask a question. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so I got one from. Uh, I'll start with a question here, and this one's from Todd. Todd doesn't say where he's from, but that's fine. Um, Todd says he has a smell that comes out of his drains after everybody in the house has a shower, and he wants to know what he can do to stop it. He said he's used uh, the liquid kind of plumber. Uh, products uh, and it's not a blockage but it's because the water and sink the water is exiting from the sinks and the bathtubs uh, uh, you know very easily so they're not backed up that's they're not, not causing a smell they're not backed up so yeah i think this could be um uh, one of a few things i actually talked to one of my plumbers about this and that's why i think I, I should reinstate one thing i'm not a jack of all trades kind of construction guy i'm, I'm the business owner driving this kind of new business platform through and i have a huge support of professionals around me so it's funny people even now stop me on the street or whatever ask me come up ask me a, a random construction question like what do you think about you know this or that and I'm like <laughs> or my mother from Newfoundland calling you to ask you about the bathroom fan problem yeah Sandra's <laughs> mother on her on like first holiday in 25 years went to Newfoundland is emailing me a question about uh, a roof vent on their co cousin's <laughs> beach shed in uh, out of Mongolia or something so <laughs> <laughs> of course I answered so it. Cute. Of course I answered it. Very <laughs> of cute. You did. Anyway, back to the question. So yeah, that that smell is it's I guess it's a common problem. It could be a couple of things. It could be just sewer gases coming up through the drains. Um could be a blockage. What would cause that <coughs> to come up though? Why doesn't everybody get that? Well, there's things like P traps like if you if you look under your your bathroom sink you'll see like a <coughs> a U shaped thing which is commonly known as a P trap where there's water sits in there, it stops the sewer gases travelling back up and exiting through the drains and that's what those P traps are for and that's in all your plumbing fixtures. So Okay. Sometimes those P-traps get dry where there's no water sitting in there, so the sewer gas can escape back up through the plumbing and kind of get that odor. Sometimes there is blockages in in the in the plumbing system that wandering through the house or the main sewer line exiting out to the uh, out to the street there. So over time, there's grease and sediment. All these things kind of build up over time and can make things drain slowly and accumulate substances that may may give off odors. Right. So that's 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 mainly the two things so either sewer gas <coughs> from a dry p trap or just a plumbing system that needs some servicing and you know it's okay to the, the interior plumbing but the actually the sewer line that's out in your garden that goes underground to the city main line sometimes again that gets clogged up or even when they built the house it may not have the correct grade on it so it's not draining fast enough um you said a lot of that <coughs> infrastructure like in Shaughnessy and the older parts of Vancouver are very old as well. Many right? different many different areas of Vancouver actually. We actually Fair Trade Works actually heads a, a program with the City of Vancouver Engineering Department <coughs> which is a sewer separation program so where we're helping to ultimately put band-aids on uh, the private side to stop because of the city infrastructure is so old where there's old sewer lines and uh, stormwater lines which are just so old that they're, they're overloaded, so in heavy rain situations or in the middle of the winter when there's a huge downpour, the, the actual city mains get overloaded and start backing up onto private property and that can push sewers back up to into the private property and obviously push gases and, and smells up. Um, because if you can imagine, like some of, like I've done a whole street on the east side of Vancouver, for example, where the, this, 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 the, the city infrastructure was backing up into the private homes um, and basically the street got developed from these old single-story homes or bungalows and now there's all these kind of larger homes going going from one bathroom to oh five yes. bathrooms so even on a single street the number of bathrooms and the water and the water amount of water and sewage going into the system is, is literally like you know quadrupled you know four or five times got heavier so th like the city infrastructure it literally just simply can't keep up with the new load and demand of um, of these larger homes and and more density in in the streets and, you, and you'll see the city of vancouver right now even on every street they're 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 digging in those underground pipes or upgrading the sewer system 
stormwater system, water supplies. Um, and yeah, there's, I know the city of Vancouver actually have a plan to really aggressively drive funding in to, to get the infrastructure um, upgraded and, and, and scaled up to, to take all this future development. Right? So Interesting. Yeah, so it's fun to be a part of that as well. Well, here's another question. Uh, this time it is from the island, uh, Cowichan. Ed wants to know what he should do when he's choosing the right roof. He said he inherited an old home from his parents. He doesn't have a lot of money to do all of the renos that he needs to have done, but he said he knows the roof isn't going to make it through the winter, and he's a little nervous about picking someone to do the his roof for him. What should he look for? Sure. Well, you know, the roof covers all our heads, right? So I think it's important that we do a little bit of research, and, and I'd say certainly get the right person involved. You know, the most common... Um, roof covering is asphalt shingle you know it's the most cost effective it's the most commonly used and actually asphalt singles historically used to be um, classified by the actual weight like paper weight you know from thin to thick but now as we've become a little bit more sophisticated the manufacturers actually create a war warranty and it's actually they're actually a numbered warranty which is starts at 15 years 15 years 20 years 25 years 30 30 up to 35 years right so it's very easy to pick your shingle because it's, it's based on how long it's going to last for, right? And the, and the manufacturers, like I said, provide a warranty. So the only other variant in that is obviously the installer, right? So mm -hmm. it's okay to have a product that's going to last X amount of time and be and have a written warranty. But who's installing that, right? Make sure they do it correctly. Make sure they all get, get all the flashing correctly. So um, find a reputable company. Obviously, Fairtrade works as it has probably 10 or 15 roofing companies that have already been pre-screened and, and are very savvy and offer a, a, a written warranty on their install, not just the manufacturer's warranty on the product, because it's so easy for people to say, well, that, that's, uh, the, you know, the, the product is going to last 25 years, but does the install going to last right? So we So say that again, sorry, for those of us, we have to look for two things. Two things, the manufacturer's warranty on the product. Okay. And, you know, and then also the install warranty, that's a separate issue. So the company installing should offer a warranty on their workmanship as well. Okay, got it. And, and, and you'll see lots of roofing websites, you'll say this, but ask some homeowners, did you get the warranty? And they failed to get the paperwork or they didn't ask for it. So it's very important. And we, at Fairtrade Works, we always ensure when we, as our promise to our clients, we, we handle all that stuff for them, that we always hand over the package with the manufacturers and the and a workmanship warranty. And we, we, we also keep a file at our office in case there's any other problems and we help them make sure that those warranties are well withheld. And nice to pass on to new owners if you're selling your home as well, right? I mean, Ed doesn't know if he's going to be keeping this home or not. So that's a nice thing for new owners to it have is, It is an hands. investment, right? And it's nice to, with, the, with the shingles to see that the yearly warranties on there. So you can do your math, right? Like incrementally, it gets more cost effective the longer the warranty on the shingle. But it depends how much you want to invest at that time. So it's you know, with the right advice, you can make sure that you make the right investment for the short and long term. It truly is. Um, Jim, I, I always, when I'm listening to you answer these questions, what do you think it is that makes homeowners feel so vulnerable when they're trying to pick these people to come in and do work on their homes? Like, I'm listening to you, and I, I, even with bated breath, I'm holding my breath listening to the answer because I know how Ed feels. I, I mean, I'm lucky I work for Fair Trade Works now, but for those people who don't have that resource around. Yeah, I think it's just inconsistency. You just don't know who's coming to your door. You know, it's, it's easy to look online, find a website, get a referral, but there's just inconsistency. You, you could call 10 companies and they'll tell you 10 different things and they'll give you 10 different price points. And, you know, you might meet one guy who's, who's going to be the salesman, but who's doing the install, you know, who's he hiring? And <coughs> you might hire one company to do it once. And then next time that company does a, the next install, it's a whole new bunch of employees because of the changeover. So I think it's simply inconsistency of, of price point, of quality, and you just don't know who you're getting, you know, involved in this and there's no way of there's no way of really tracing it or tracking it or or really analyzing that you can call a reference or you can you know they google review which they could do themselves you know it's it's all it's all just so erratic mm -hmm. i think that's the most scary part it's it's ultimately russian roulette so um again that's why i started fair trade works to ensure that fair trade works is third party to the construction industry so when our consumers call us we absolutely ensure that they get the right people involved to do their project and all the trades and all the construction companies that are involved on our platform walking through your doors are heavily screened. We know they have liability insurance. We know by professionals. By <laughs> by pro exactly, they're professional people. One quick question to uh, jump in here before we have to wrap up. Um, <laughs> this is really cute. It's <laughs> the note I'm just going to read to you. Dear Jim and Renovate and Build, I enjoy your show and was wondering if you ever thought of doing a local TV show on how to beat the scammers in construction in Vancouver. 
and now this isn't a nice part of the letter, I was taken by a contractor for $50,000. He made a mess of my new addition, which then needed to be ripped out, and he also took the remainder of my money and opened a restaurant. <laughs> the lawyers told me that the fees to sue him would be too exorbitant, so not to bother. What can I do, Annie? Annie, well, first of all, that's <laughs> we we hate hearing these stories. You know, all you know, it's it, 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 it's we hear this all too often, and you we read the stories and this about is Chinese restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> we are just wondering what's on the menu, but, but the <coughs> but the uh, all too often that 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 people are getting ripped off by construction companies, you know, and people Im put the trust on a handshake to these people tell them a story, we're going to do this and that, and put their hand over the keys, and then. Yeah you know, get robbed, basically, you know, and it's terrible. And uh, to be honest, some of these things, it's, it's like you mentioned, yeah, get a lawyer. How much is that going to cost? Your house is a disaster. You've already been through this hell. Your financial strain. Emotionally, strength. you're exhausted. Oh, you're absolutely exhausted, you know. You just feel like you've been taken and taken in your own home. So, you know, just do due diligence. Get the right, again, get the right people involved. Be absolutely certain who you're calling professionals who have the backing of, 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 a, of a brand and have been in business for a long time. And Especially rescuing this project. She doesn't have time or money again to go through this, you know, not trusting somebody. Exactly. So, so if she's going to do it again, you know, and sometimes we get frustrated because homeowners maybe take the cheaper route or go, oh, well, this guy works in the name, you know. <coughs> they think they're being okay, but then they get into this situation and they start again. And we've heard it time and time again at Federal. We just wish <coughs> that we'd talk to you guys before this nightmare had started, right? So, uh, And the TV show? Uh, it's funny, we actually got approached by a TV show again today, and <laughs> locally in Vancouver, but we've also been approached from a couple of uh, um, networks out in Toronto, so uh, <coughs> you never know, you never know. <laughs> you never say never, never in this Never say industry. never, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you to everyone who emailed us their questions. That's all the time we have right now. Um, if We're sorry we didn't get to everyone's questions. We do have a few more lined up here, but next week we'll dedicate more gym time. Plus, any questions we don't get on the air, I promise that our staff will get back to you to assist you. And if you'd like to contact us with your question, uh, please email us, radio at fairtradeworks.biz. Coming up right after the break, we're gearing up for another round of product face-off. This week, Gary and Meg are talking towel warmers. Mm. There's still lots more ahead. This is Renovate and Build, powered by Fairtrade Works, with Jim and Sandra.